Good evening, RPG Limit Break fans! Welcome to tonight's Archipelago Tournament, excuse me, exhibition match between Papa Dukes paired with Waffle, or with Waffle Soup, and Deadpools teaming up with Saracen. I'm Hate the 13th, joined in the booth by Wef Jebster with Jet doing some tracking for us. Uh, how you doing tonight, Wef? I'm doing peachy keen tonight, Hate. Uh, I'm really excited for this upcoming tournament. This exhibition is going to be a nice preview of some pretty uh, pretty high quality gameplay about what you're going to be able to expect out of this upcoming tournament. I uh, I really can't wait. I don't know a whole bunch about Final Fantasy One Randomizer. I, I'm in I'm kind of in the learning phases right now. I'm definite time spinner expert uh so i'm hoping to kind of get an idea of you know what ff1 randomizer is all about i was just telling people i uh, booted up my first ff1 randomizer seed and i left corneria and immediately got party wiped by fire twos cast by the imps just outside of town so i think i've got an idea of what i'm looking for in this randomizer and i can't wait to see how the multi-world uh pans out Yep, that is a quintessentially Final Fantasy 1 randomized experience, I am not going to lie. Um, but for those who are not familiar with what Archipelago is, it is a multi-game, multi-world system. It allows you to take, you know, however many games that you want of... Or there's what? 12, 13... There's like 13 or 14, when, you know, you know, there's always people looking to add their game to Archipelago. So uh, it it's kind of creates all kinds of wild situations. Obviously, uh, if you're familiar with the concept of a multi-world, what it does is it spreads all of those items you can find across all of these randomizers across all the different games. So say I'm playing Link to the Past. I wake up in Uncle's house. I could send uh, the uh, space jump to someone who's playing Super Metroid on that first chest in your uncle's house. So it, it creates some real wild situations. Uh, if you can get enough people in voice chat, there's a lot of like hype moments. Like, oh my God, I found your space jump. It's it's really fun. Uh, I suggest anyone who's interested uh, to go check it out. Yeah, and uh, honestly, like I picked up Time Spinner a couple of months ago because of Archipelago. Um, I am primarily a Final Fantasy One randomizer runner, and. But uh, when Jat, our tracker, started working on getting Final Fantasy set up for Archipelago, he mentioned Time Spinner as a game. and I'd seen it before, hadn't played it, picked it up, and it just, oh, I fell in love with it. The movement is so fluid, so much fun. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to love about Time Spinner. Uh, it's one of the newer games in Archipelago uh, by release date, I guess I should say. Uh, so it's got a lot of the polish that modern games have that, you know, sometimes you just kind of work around for like the NES and Super Nintendo era um, era games. But uh, I'm really looking forward to the cross contamination between the Final Fantasy one randomizer and time spinner randomizer uh, communities. I'm I'm trying to kind of like lead the charge here to get people going the other way, because I know the FF one randomizer people invaded the time spinner randomizer discord. We've been very, very grateful for that. Yeah, it's uh, there's been more than a few times when we've been running multi-worlds on the FFR server where it's been more time spinner than FFR. Uh, <laughs> anywho, uh, the racers are all ready, and I'm about to drop the gate on them, so we'll be seeing them go very shortly. And uh, please note on the layout, this is a uh, work in progress. We'll get better ones for the actual tournament, hopefully. And... All right. Uh, good luck to all our racers. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing all the interactions between these two seeds. The interesting thing about Time Spinner is it's very easy to front load a whole lot of items in Time Spinner. Uh, in the flag set that we're using, it's inverted. So you actually start at about the halfway point of the game uh, and you are able to just open up all kinds of checks right away. So the, you have the you have the real possibility to open up a lot of progression really, really quickly. And it might be just a routing decision uh, game where there's going to be a lot to do, and it really depends on who chooses to do what. Yep. And uh, the third little window below, that is our view into what's actually being sent back and forth. And what we're seeing here, and what we're seeing on the screen is the Time Spinner people getting an amazing start, at least with a weapon. Yeah, Empire Orb, very, very powerful orb. It's uh, kind of the last orb you get in the game. Uh, we have a saying that everything's weak to punch, 
As you'll see, uh, these Empire Orbs create gigantic fists of aura that punch enemies for just a lot of damage. So even if an enemy is like strong against the element that Empire Orb is, we still say it's a pretty usable item just because of how powerful it is. And what we're also seeing on the Final Fantasy side, uh, we saw Papa Dukes do a restart because he did not have a white mage initially. Final Fantasy, Oops. yeah, well, and the thing is, most of the time, a lot of people don't take white mages. Um, up until recently, white mages weren't exactly the best class. There is one flag enabled for this, though, the white mage harm all. What that does is that Ooh. takes the harm spells, which normally do a whole lot of nothing, and, or, well, they hurt undead, but really, that's about it. There's but, a couple undead bosses, aren't there? Eh, there's one undead boss, it shows up oh, twice. Okay. Um, but what it does is it makes it so that if a white mage casts any of the harm spells, it'll do damage to anything. We That's had, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And we saw harm four at level one. That is really good. Yeah. So Papa Duke's reset to get a white mage in because that way he would have a sweeper available at level one. That is pretty nice to do. Uh, it allows you to actually, from from my brief experience with FF1 Randomizer, it allows you to uh, maybe uh, punch above your weight class in some of these uh, some of these encounters. Maybe finish a couple fights, get some early experience. Oh yeah, it's a it's a thing of wonder and beauty. Uh, one of the early items that the Time Spinner players got with the Star of Lachiam. Usually, uh, Luneus, our protagonist of Time Spinner, has two orbs. And the Star of Lachium effectively gives you a third orb, so you increase your damage output by an additional 50%, which is really good, especially when you have such a really high damage item. And you can also, uh, if you miss, you get like an extra try at hitting. It's just a lot, uh, a lot of help in the early game. Yeah. Oh, and chat uh, pointing out that. There was also level one nuke, so we have all of the non-elemental murder bots immediately available. Level one nuke and level one level four harm is pretty good. Yeah. So what we saw on Deadpool's screen is he jumped up to Matoya's cave, looted her out, and found the ship. Now, the ship normally will spawn at the closest dock in the inner sea, but with Archipelago, the ship always will spawn at Corn Area. Good to know. Yeah. All right, now we've already got some diverging paths. It looks like Saracen is going to continue through, uh, continue through the uh, caves, even though he does not have the water mask. I apologize if I'm getting pronouns wrong there. I'm gonna just go ahead and swap to the until someone corrects. No, me. no, no. Saracen, uh, Saracen is he him as well. Uh, okay. So Saracen uh, is going through these caves, uh, going to fight some of these slimes, which has a couple advantages. Uh, pretty good experience early, and they also they drop ethers, uh, which, uh, depending on how the progression is, uh, can really pay off in the end. Uh, Waffle Soup, on the other hand, going through and taking uh, the route into what is more likely to be required by progression, but as we know, this is Archipelago, and progression could be anywhere, not even in uh, their game necessarily. Yeah, progression progression is a thing that happens sometimes. Yes, so what Waffle Soup is doing right now is a more conventional uh, progression if he was doing this solo. And um, as he's raising this bridge here, he's going to jump down. You can just barely make this jump. See, he, he chickened out on it for a second there. <laughs> and yeah. uh, picking up an item. I... It looks like that was a heel helm, which was sent to Papa Dukes. Um, yeah. So the way that this one is set up, Excuse me. Uh, we have a 32 shard hunt going on on the Final Fantasy side. That means instead of finding and defeating the four elemental fiends, you have to find a total of 32 shards, which are just scattered about in either game. Um, you can find them in chests in the Final Fantasy game, and the Time Spinner players can find them in chests or, you know, laying about. Uh, additionally, so all the shards are in the pool. All of the money chests are in the pool. Any of the legendary and, well, basically the really good equipment, that's in the pool. Uh, so yeah, you'll see stuff like you might find a Moss Immune in a Time Spinner Seed and send that on over to your Final Fantasy player. 
you might yeah. find the star in a Final Fantasy box and send it out to the Time Sparrow player, though. So it's... Yeah, we, we actually uh, saw the Final Fantasy players send uh, out of one of their shop checks a librarian hat, which is, is not bad for an early game piece of equipment. Yep. So yeah, even that vendor item that in vanilla is the bottle that you can get at the caravan in the desert, that also is an AP check. You find an item for sale that's labeled as AP item, pick it up. If it's for you, great. If it's not, you can reset out of it and save it. Save that cash. As long as you saved recently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, there's actually going to be some sort of interesting uh, play with Archipelago that you don't usually see in solo, at least time spinners. Um, if you pick up an item for another game and then die, the other game still keeps that item. So that, that kind of adds, before you get the fast travel and time spinner, it kind of adds a bit of uh, routing complexity. Like, I don't know, should you use death warp? It's, I mean, you lose a lot of your own progression, but if you didn't get anything for yourself and only all you got was for the other player, then it might be faster to death warp back to the last save point and take a different route for progression. Yep. Never underestimate the power of a good blood port. Yeah. So... Since Final Fantasy is, well, really quite an old game and Time Spinner isn't, um, why don't you cover some of the basics of Time Spinner for us? It's, uh... Sure. Uh, so Time Spinner uh, is a game that is about a, a young woman whose family, uh, if you want to call it that, is uh, they're kind of like a reclusive civilization. And uh, I'm going to pause for a second to point out that uh, Waffle Soup just got the Celestial Sash, which is an infinite vertical movement item. Very, very important. Uh, it's going to make a lot of uh, the future movement pretty easily, and it's also unlocked basically all of the right side of the game, uh, of the past, anyway, uh, right here. So this is going to be pretty big, uh, pretty big movement, and it's probably going to be found by both players. Yeah. Uh, but but yes, the, the idea behind Time Spinner is that there's a civilization of... Uh, of people who train to be so-called time spinners or not time spinners. They, they, they're time travelers and they use something called the time spinner to uh, travel uh, back in time and basically protect their civilization and change and change things. So what Luneus is doing, uh, her journey through time is spurred on by an emperor coming and trying to, uh, well, it's short, I'm, I'm trying to remember what is a spoiler and what isn't, but an emperor kind of invades their village. And so uh, Luneus, our protagonist, is kind of thrust through time to uh, try and uh, solve this issue. She's basically retreating, but she decides to use time travel to stop that invasion from ever happening. Uh, so that's the general plot of this game. Uh, it's a Metroidvania, if you uh, choose to use that term. Um, and it's got, uh, what a lot of people say about it, uh, is the movement and the mechanics are all very smooth and very pleasing to play. And that's kind of what I was talking about with a lot of the, the enhancements that you get out of a newer game that kind of just makes things real, real nice to just play. It's real easy to pick up. The movement is very satisfying. Yeah. And just as pointing out something that, uh, is exclusive to Archipelago or at least between the two games. If you notice on the left side player, or on the left side team, in the uh, little text block at the bottom, you'll see Hint Teleria Attachment. So what that does is you can hint a couple of times per game. It costs, it costs something, or it costs some, some resources which are tracked externally, but that will tell you what chest the item that you're looking for is in. In that instance, it looks like Waffle was looking for the Teleria attachment, which is also known as the Go Fast or the Noom, because well, yes, yeah, it's the dash item. Yes, it yeah, is. And we unfortunately don't get to see the result of that hint for obvious uh, for obvious reasons. Um, but it'll be interesting to see where that ends up being. He's not immediately uh, rerouting himself to go somewhere else, so. Uh, I have a feeling that it's not uh, in a different route just outside of where he is right now. I don't know about you, but I am, when I'm commentating, kind of particularly fond of 
commentating and calling nasty seeds, so I'm hoping that we see the Teleria at Dad's Tower. I'm hoping we get a nice dashless seed. They've already gotten too much nice with a with a celestial sash early. Yeah, and you know, punchy fists to start. Yeah, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of good happening to the time spinner players here that I think we could I think we could go for some some rudeness. Yeah, and uh, we saw that the water mask came into Deadpool and Saracen. That one was found in Marsh Cave, which I Ooh, that is that is a required item. Um, there, uh, with no glitches, uh, with no major glitches allowed, that water mask is required to get to one of the required bosses. So that'll be an interesting. That's see, that's that's again what I'm what I'm talking about. Or Waffle Soup, if he was playing solo, he's playing you know his progression numbers, but it turns out one of the biggest pieces of progression isn't even in Time Spinner. Yep. Yeah, water mask hard required, and yeah, he kind of kind of hate to see it in Marsh because really not many people like going to Marsh. Uh, oh well, that could be a big deal if if Papa Dukes never goes to Marsh or waits to go to Marsh. No, he actually um, uh, he has already gone to Marsh. It looks like uh, he just went to Marsh top first um, and is looting the stuff out there, which included a blood orb. Which oh, I love the blood orb. Okay, so yeah, we, I am seeing uh, the Valetian crown, which uh, Saracen actually had quite a while ago. Uh, Saracen choosing to use Blood Orb. Okay, yeah, he, he switched over to uh, Empire Orb pretty quickly there. Um, a lot of strategy in Time Spinner is uh, managing boss and enemy weaknesses. Uh, as you see, uh, he has Shattered Orb, and he has switched over to Shattered Orb. This boss is particularly weak to blunt damage, and Shattered Orb is a particularly good way to deal blunt damage, so... He should be making relatively quick work of this boss. Ah, okay, so it looks like when Waffle tried that hint earlier, he didn't have enough hint points. Oh! Uh, so, yeah, it looks like that one, Below Sealed Cave Mini Jackpot Room. Oh, well, there it is. Yeah, okay, it's, so that... It's not as bad as it could be, kind of unfortunately. Well, if they never get a card... <laughs> oh, yeah, Sealed Cave, oh. Yeah, Sealed oh. Cave, it's not Cave of Banishment, yeah. it's Sealed Cave. Oh, though, Deadpool's Check and Earth Cave... Finding the Twin Pyramid Keys for Saracen. Oh my goodness, there you go. There's your fast travel. So we know uh, where the teleport item is and we know where the dash item is. That Twin Pyramid Keys is quite, oh, and there's the water mask for Waffle Soup. Um, but that is gonna be very interesting. Uh, that Twin Pyramid Keys can take a chunk of time off of a of a time spinner player's uh, seed length. And speaking of seed length, uh, why don't you go to how we are scoring uh, the the times in this exhibition race and in this tournament? Yeah, so the way that the tournament's going to be scored, it is it going to be the sum of both times. So say the Final Fantasy runner finishes 20 minutes after the time spinner runner, it will be the, the cumulative total of their times. Like if time spinner finished up at 50 minutes uh, and Final Fantasy finished up at 110, then you will get a two-hour score, basically. Oh, and Saracen not remembering that he has the royal ring, or he didn't pick up the royal ring. Oh, um, okay, good. There he goes. Yeah, he remembered. There he, he got it. <laughs> I saw him going towards the door, and I was like, "You, you have it." You, I, I wonder if he's using the tracker. It's not visible on our uh, on our feed. Yeah, Saracen does not actually tend to use the tracker. Uh, well, he, yeah, it's 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 a thing. Um, he uh, doesn't have the real estate for it generally, but uh, it's a good thing he did check because the Moss Immune was hiding in Yas Queen. Hey, that's a pretty good weapon out here. Yeah, that is the arguably the best sword in the game. It has the most damage, has the most quote unquote hit, and the only thing it's lacking is crit. But it is hard hidden. So how important is the ruby in Final Fantasy? Uh, variable importance. Um, the ruby blocks the gateway into four treasure chests and one what is normally incentivized to check. Uh, that would be Sarda's cave. Uh, Got it. Yeah, in the vanilla game you have to actually you get the ruby from behind the vampire and then you get the rod from the old man in the cave, so you can go back underneath the vampire and beat that dungeon. It's it's a pain in the butt. It is a massive pain in the butt, I'm not going to lie. 
Well, hopefully something important is there. <laughs> <laughs> because that ruby is going to be readily available to both Final Fantasy players. Um, Papa Dukes already has it. Ooh. And um, Saracen is going to come across it uh, for the uh, for Dead Pulse. And more, um, pretty soon. more importantly, uh, we got the loot for Papa Dukes. That is also a hard required game. Uh, or not game, hard required item because whilst we do have a shortened Topher on that is the last dungeon is going to be a, a quick and short one you are not going to be uh, you're not going to be able to get into it if you don't have that loot that's the gotcha. only option for it so yeah it looks like uh, these are all you know pl uh, this loot I guess was at the right tower yeah it looks like all of the uh all of these important or pseudo important items are kind of just on the regular path uh, of gameplay here. So it's uh, I'm wondering if most of the routing divergence interest is going to end up in the Final Fantasy seed. Sorry about that noise there. I just noticed that uh, Dead Pulse found the floater, which is an amazing item because that's what lets you get your airship. Yeah, the airship. Um, pretty important. Yeah, the ability to, you know, fly around, get to every other place in the game, kind of useful. And that looks like also the canoe, which was found, uh, hinted for by Dead Pulse, and also found by Waffle Soup at the, uh, at the chest behind Alana. Yep. So, uh, again, that's going to be something that, uh, that uh, Saracen's going to run up against very, very shortly here. Uh, let's see. He's got Blood Orb equipped. Let's see if he remembers that Empire Orb is just as good, if not better. Uh, well, he's going with Blood Orb anyway. It does have the advantage of being homing. You don't have to be as accurate. Uh, but at Empire Orb doing what from what time spent or from what Waffle Soup had was about 24, uh, 24 damage per hit. That Empire Orb really does uh, add up a lot of damage quickly. Yeah, though it looks like the Blood Orb is hitting for, it looks like, 9 damage per, which, you know, 27 per swing. And there he goes back to the punchy fists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, a quick 81 and then another quick 81. It's um, it's nice. The Blood Orb switching when uh, you don't have double jump to uh, be able to hit Ilana while she's kind of floating up there out, out of the reach of the Empire Orb, that's good strategies. Um, not getting hit by the pink blade over and over again is also a good strategy. <laughs> ah, face tank it. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I always say you only need one hit point. So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and there is the canoe that, uh, well, was just sent to Dead Pulse, and given that Dead Pulse has already looted out, uh, looted out Earth, got that floater, he's probably going to be going to get his skyboat real soon here. Yeah, I would imagine that's probably your uh, your best option whenever it's available to you. And it looks like the Titan's Tunnel and Sarda was a giant pile of nothing. So that was just a trip over for wasted time. Titan's Tunnel being what you need the ruby for, right? Correct. Yeah. Ooh. Is that uh, randomized, the gem that he... or the what he likes to eat? Uh, it can be. There is a fun percent flag that can change the name of the ruby to any number of things. You can set oh, it okay. so that he'll eat healthy things, like, you know, vegetables of some kind. I, I don't know. Gotcha. I, I don't see many healthy things come up. You can also <laughs> set it so that he takes drinks, and there's been more than a few times I've given him a bottle of tequila, and he's just like, crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, this is good. <laughs> no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> there's also some of the other uh, fun things where you can get Paste. I love feeding in paste. But it looks like Papa Dukes is in Earth and has found that TPK, the Twin Pyramid Keys, for Waffle Soup. Yeah, that's actually really good timing. Waffle Soup is about to come up on a warp, and that'll allow him uh, to check out what is in the present. I don't believe Saracen has looked yet. I know he did um, at least a quick warp, but I didn't see where it was to. Oh, it's a it's because it's a past. W wait, no, what is was no no oh oh warp. no oh wait a no, minute. No, this is fine. I just yeah, I was thinking I saw caves of banishment and got confused. I always oh, get yeah, the past sealed... caves and the present caves confused. Yeah, caves of banishment is in the past, sealed caves. 
is what happens when you seal the cave of banishment so um interested to see what is in the present the important part is you do at least one warp because that's the only way that your warp shard item actually functions and what the warp shard is is a item that when you use it it just takes you right to uh the last warp point that you used so you have to use a warp point at least once in order for the uh, twin pyramid keys to actually do what they need to do yeah and uh to answer chat's question of whether i would do the left side of the past or the present at this point it would depend if i had something that let me burn the vines in the past i would go past if not or if i didn't i would check the present to see what the easy checks there were also once again depending upon where the present start is yeah, if the presence, it depends on what the present start is. Um, if you have access, if you have quick access to library, and if you have the D key card, I would say that's worth it. Uh, the, the important part to remember is that all of your required stuff, all your required bosses are in the past. So if your goal here, since it is cumulative time, and if you finish quickly, you are actually saving your, your team as a whole a bunch of time. You're trying to get to go mode as quickly as you can. So it's worth thinking that, hey, maybe I just kill all the bosses. And then I'm just in, you know, I'm just waiting for items at this point. Oh, and it looks like Waffle found his A card. So that does actually potentially open up. Oh, that oh. is, um, that is big. Uh, I, I noted earlier that Saracen went down to those caves and, uh, without the water mask. And it turns out that in those caves that Saracen already visited, if he had had the water mask, he probably would have gotten that A key card which we know leads to the Talari attachment, which is your dash. Probably going to take a solid, I don't know, minutes off of the gameplay of Time Spinner. Military Hanger is the present warp. Oh. Uh, that is not super great. Um, yeah. Waffle Soup determining that, hey, you know what? I'm going to go beat some bosses. Uh, we've already killed the Golden Idol and Ilana, which are two of the three. The last remaining one is the Maw, which is underground uh the reason that he did not take that military hangar is because it is quite far away from the sealed caves where he knows that his dash is so the time gained from getting the dash is probably not worth it if you walk all the way there and there's nothing else that you need yeah and uh the other problem with the uh with the uh military hangar start is you don't really have access to a whole lot of stuff if you don't have the elevator key card or the b or key card. Or if you card. don't have the b key card that is yeah that is the main issue uh waffle soup can't actually get anywhere to the left of much to the left of where he is there's one treasure chest i think he has available to him so yeah he decided that wasn't even worth it yeah. so we're looking for the b key card here um not only for that but it because it is a required item uh, in order to get to the end game. So uh, that is something else that we're going to need to look out for. Yeah. Got to get that B key card because with the military hangar start, yeah, you can get to the military hangar, but you can't get into the lab without that B card. Yeah, it looks like um, on the way to this Azure Queen boss, Saracen picked up two consecutive shards for Final Fantasy, so that's pretty good. Um, we'll see how quickly uh, Waffle Soup ends up getting those. He might go swimming first uh he's yeah you see he's swimming now but he might go swimming first below all of the chests that uh saracen, saracen just picked up um they do not have fire right now so uh saracen um uh, may be having to double double back uh through these rooms yep and it looks like found a light wall which is you know more vertical movement uh really good against the final boss <laughs> oh yes but given that they don't uh or given that they've already got the sash eh, light wall a bit of less import yeah i i guess depending on where the b key card is they might not even need to go to the left of their present warp at all in order to uh finish the game and then hand off all of their items over to their final fantasy counterparts and kind of a good find on that chicken ledge there. Uh, got a ribbon, uh, which in Final Fantasy, ribbon, it protects you against all elements and all the status effects, unless you get, you know, a really unlucky roll. Um, we call that a three and 256, because that's the odd it's gonna happen. Oof. Yeah. Ribbon, even if it is, you know, minus nine, best headgear again in the game. All right, we do have, um... 
a bit of routing divergence. Waffle Soup's not even bothering to go fight Azure Queen. He's going uh, swimming. There's going to be a couple chests that he's getting here that Saracen didn't get. There's going to be a couple chests that Saracen did get that Waffle Soup's not going to get until later. Um, Saracen will be the first to get to uh, the Maw, but uh, there are a lot of checks. Again, those swimming checks with that A key card. If, if the A key card ends up being required, that is going to be a big factor in this race. Yeah, and uh, Deadpool's in what is, well, the volcano, which is affectionately known as, uh, oh, sorry, my brain just kind of melted on me there. Um, oh my god, I've forgotten. It's 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 basically a knockoff of Stackerico. Stackcano, that's what we've been calling it. Ah, got it. Yeah, if you listen closely, you can actually hear the point when the gears in my brain started going, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and in the volcano, he actually found his own tail, which is useful for promotion. And yeah. uh, the Time Spinner Spindle. The time Spinner Spindle, uh, one of the required items. Uh, you need to have all five pieces of the Time Spinner in order to break time and go kill God. Uh, you can fill in all the details when you play the vanilla game later. Oh, and there's a hint for Security Key Card B coming through. It's, at, it's in... Uh, Waffle Soup's world, and I'm going to have to poke fun at him later for this. It is in the waterfall chests. Um, this is funny because uh, I've, I'm kind of known for skipping waterfall chests, and I got <laughs> knocked out of the tournament because in two consecutive seeds I didn't get them. So oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to poke at him for that because he skipped them. So uh, that's really interesting. Waterfall chests having their ability to get to the left and as such the ability to go get that dash um, if they so need to. That A key card does get you a couple other things in the so-called spider hell rooms that we'll see if we get to see later. Uh, but really the main thing of that A key card gets you is the sealed caves and the Zarian boss fight. And as we know, it'll be the Teleria attachment, uh, which uh, allows you to move a lot more quickly across the overworld. And Papa Dukes is, uh, I don't think he noticed that he got the Sage on the first one he talked to. So what we have flag, or have, have here is called the Confused Old Men flag. Um, it takes the circle of Sages who normally are, you know, nice and proper and just kind of sit in place and lets them wander about. Oh boy, that it, sounds fun. Yeah, it's definitely a thing. All right, we do have uh, Saracen got the Economizer Ring, which is kind of nice, um, but it turns out that our Time Spinner runners really haven't found any very powerful spells. What the Economizer Ring uh, does for all you Final Fantasy VI fans is kind of what it says on the tin. It makes your spells cost a lot less. Yeah, it's useful if you don't have the Celestial Sash and have to do the horrible, horrible climb at the end of the game. Yes. Yes, it is. It's very useful in order to cast light walls in order to get your climbs. And uh, there's a succubus hairpin, which does uh, fill out the holy trinity of vertical movement. Uh, light wall, celestial sash, and succubus hairpin. Succubus hairpin is a double jump, uh, which, you know, if you have infinite vertical, isn't so useful. for. But uh, the, the double jump doesn't kill your horizontal movement at the same time. So it has its uses even if you do have the infinite vertical. Yeah, it, it basically allows you to, you know, functionally fly and uh looks like we are going to get uh well saracen is missing the gas mask so he is going to start losing health here he's just going to grab this check grab this save point and uh do those checks earlier that are underwater that he missed it looks like which is going to be good for him he's going to get that a key card you know i i don't hate this routing decision um I mean, I dislike the, you know, going down to the sealed caves earlier just because I do not like going to the caves of banishment. But that's also just because I kind of don't like going down to the caves of banishment. But taking the route up from the Maw and breaking through the mine shaft so that when he does actually get the gas mask, he can go down and kill the Maw, I do like that. Yeah, uh, it's really uh, getting those unlocked, getting those warps unlocked. Uh, speaking of which, just, we just saw a waffle soup go buy warp shards. I don't know if they've found any warp shard drops. Uh, so uh, that will allow uh, waffle soup to go around and uh, warp between all of his warp points very quickly. I stammered there because we just saw an elevator key card coming from the ice cave in Final Fantasy into Time Spinner. Ooh. And uh, it does look like waffle soup 
uh, is going on that hint and saying, all right, well, I got to go get my B key card because I just got the elevator key card. And that gives me a lot to do. <laughs> yep. And what we saw from Deadpool's was that he got the crown from Saracen and you know, and one of the underwater checks and Saracen, or, and then he went to go hand it into the kindly old king and saw the kindly old king had a pile of garbage and he just reset out of it because why bother? <laughs> Yeah, it looks like the crown was sent from Time Spinner. Yes, it was. And it yeah. looks like Saracen is going and getting that one little check. I don't remember if he grabbed the waterfall check or not, though. I don't know if he did. Um, that's going to be required. I, this is where I kind of wish we, we had a tracker to look at, because sometimes we can lose... Uh, no, he does not have the B key card. He is Whoops. going to hint for the B key card, probably... Um, no, he's hinting for gas mask. Yep, and now he's realizing, crap, I don't have anything I can do here. Yep. I wonder if he has enough hints for B key, hint points for B key card at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there it is. Well, he didn't get the syntax on it right. There we go. And now he knows what he missed. Yep. So... Each of those hints costs a quote unquote 15% of the points that you get. Um, <laughs> and there's the gas mask. <laughs> yep. So, what those. Each time you find an AP item, that gives you one point. And because it's a 15%, each time you hint, it costs you, you know, one sixth of that, meaning you can get a total of six hints throughout the entire game. So, each time that they're using those hints and actually getting an actual response, it's a pretty valuable resource they've got. All right, so we finally hit the library. It's a pretty dense area for checks. If you have the D key card, and it's still kind of okay if you don't, there is uh, the Kickstarter backer room, which has four chests in it. Yeah, uh, otherwise, you know, it's... Yeah, you still... Yeah. I can English, I swear. Yeah, the backer room, it's a good quick five checks, and, you know... If we had the lore checks on, it would be another one, but we don't, so we're not going to worry about that. Yeah, and if we had tablet uh, downloadable uh, items, then it would be even more, because each of those computers that you're going to see in these next couple of rooms are going to be uh, downloadable items that you can then uh, get even more. That adds even more value to the library. Uh, that's another ribbon. Is two ribbons good? Uh, two ribbons good, and I think there was another ribbon found earlier, so, you know, three ribbons best. That's pretty good. <laughs> yep. All right. uh, no progression, though, uh, really. Though uh, Infernal Flames was found in one of the Cardia chests. That is their first fire? I believe so. It's, like, it's the first fire we've seen, because I know Waffle Soup didn't burn vines. Oh, oh my. And, and there's more fire. Shadow Seal was found. Shadow Seal is a pretty good item. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how, how much the Shadow Seal uh, will play into this. Uh, because of AP, they kind of get high levels just because they're running around trying to do a bunch of stuff and they end up getting a lot more kills than they normally would. Sometimes you might not want Shadow Seal because it's kind of hard to lose HP. And Shadow Seal deals more damage the more HP you're missing. Yeah, that being said, I still will use Shadow Seal against uh, against Nightmare because, you know, I'll just face tank a couple of hits. There we go. That's enough damage. Oh, yeah. Nightmare has no problem dealing damage. And you know what? Sometimes I like to use Shadow Seal because it lets me pretend that Lunaeus is headbutting the boss as <laughs> part of the offensive strategy. Uh, and it's just that's just fun. It's just fun. Oh. Time Spinner Wheel in the tower. Oh my, and Waffle Scoop, or Waffle Soup faded the tower checks. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, the wheel allows you to stop time, um, which is uh, very important during a couple of boss fights. It's also uh, very important if you're trying to like avoid damage, and there's a couple places that are a lot easier to route if you can stop time. Yeah. Hi, Boots. Bye, Boots. Yep. One of the first, actually, it is the first boss in the game, and as such, it dies real quick. You get a lab coat for beating it, which is one of the better armor pieces in the game. My, in my opinion, it's the second best. All right, so it looks like uh, Saracen has hinted for his 
gear one and found out that it's at the upper sealed cave water hook. Oh, so that means what Waffle Soup is doing right now, I guarantee you, is going to fade tower, play Zarian Caves. He has the A card. I believe Saracen also has the A card. Uh, he does, um, but Saracen doesn't have the elevator key card. Ooh, that was from a Final Fantasy. Yeah, that was from Ice Cave. And Yeah, the, uh, uh, the elevator key card... Uh, wait, upper sealed cave water hook. Oh, that's not in the sealed caves went behind the A card. That is behind the elevator key card. Yep. Ooh, that is very interesting. Uh, do we remember where that elevator key card was? Uh, it was in one of the ice cave chests, which is pretty far away from where Dead Pulse is right now. Well, we've got a couple uh, different divergences then. Uh, we have uh, Waffle Soup has one piece of the time spinner. I saw when they were on the relics menu, I believe with that wheel, uh, that gave Saracen three pieces of the time spinner. So in terms of, you know, getting one game to go mode, uh, it looks like Saracen is a bit ahead there. Uh, knowing that Zarian Caves does not have a piece of the time spinner, I believe we have full knowledge of where everything is. Uh, it looks like Waffle Soup is going to be going here, getting that dash, but no actual required items uh, for himself. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of checks down here. Final Fantasy 1 could probably go for a couple of those. Yeah, I, I'm not sure how uh, Papa is doing on his shard count. Uh, but I did also just notice that uh, one of the mermaids was holding on to a book. The Forbidden Tome. The Forbidden Tome. It's a bit of sharp damage. It's long range. I call it the gun orb, but usable. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, the, the best best part about it, though, is that lovely, lovely meatball. The yeah, the fertile. spell version of the Forbidden Tome is what is known as the meatball. It's actually called the Gin Inferno, um, and it's just it's the most powerful single cast spell in the game if you don't hit on all of your bombardment ticks. Um, very, very useful, mainly because of a glitch, a minor glitch involved that allows you to cast it uh, infinitely as long as you time it correctly. Yeah, I uh, I love I love the uh, fight against Sandman with the with the uh, meatball. Just stand back and throw fireballs at him and laugh. Oh, it's real good. It's real. It's real satisfying. All right, so we've seen Empress Robe and Empire Crown, though it looks or not Empire Crown, but Eternal Crown. Yep, uh, and we've yeah the spindle is. Um was in the volcano and uh, now it looks like Waffle Soup has that spindle. So that is one thing that uh, Saracen had on Waffle Soup. Uh, but, you know, it looks like as, you know, these routing divergences happen, the items you get, I mean, if you don't capitalize them on uh, capitalize on them quickly, then it's just inevitable that uh, all parties involved are going to check them. So, yeah. The main thing now is that elevator key card because we do know that that is literally required in order to beat the game. Yep, that is uh, that's going to be a thing because if Dead Pulse gets all his shards and such, we may see Final Fantasy finish up uh, before uh, before Time Spinner, which is a little bit odd. I'm not going to lie, um, but Dead Pulse is well, Dead Pulse. Uh, he is a amazingly fast runner for FFR. Yeah, as Waffle Soup goes through this, uh, I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on the tracker to see if he's sending anything really spicy over to Final Fantasy. And so far, I haven't seen anything. That is going to be the... Uh, unless, unless Saracen decides to also do uh, the Sealed Caves, in which case it's kind of a moot point. Uh, what we're really looking at here is uh, this major, really long check, giving what amounts to a quality of life feature in the Teleria attachment, uh, but nothing actually required. It looks like Saracen probably will be, uh, just knowing how he plays. Um, yeah, it's a sh it's it's a shame that he's burnt so many hit points and doesn't uh, have the ability to really check where that elevator key card is because if he did he could probably send impulse there to go grab it real quick like 
yep. Um, Waffle Soup did pick up that dash. You can see how much more quickly he is moving through this. So that's kind of why it's a big deal. It lets you de-boost through those snails with only taking one hit instead of like two or three. There's just a lot uh, to like about having dash. Yeah, the, the go fast, make four happy. Oh, and it looks like uh, Saracen was just grabbing the warp point and is probably going to be heading back around and not sure where he's going to be heading to. Yep. Um, Saracen's probably going to do the fire checks, but did he ever burn the vines? No, he didn't, but he's. it looks like he's probably just going to grab the starter checks. Got or it. starter chests. Well, Waffle Soup is going to be zooming through uh, the Maw Caves. It's basically the same level he was just on, uh, only easier. So uh, he's going to be doing a lot of damage boosting, not super caring about taking all kinds of damage. He's going to be dashing through things. Uh, he has the gas mask, so uh, another thing to remember is Saracen has not killed the final uh, boss that's in the past yet. I don't know if he has the gas mask. I think he did get it. Uh, yeah, he did, because it was in the C card room in Vandergroth Tower left. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, it looks like he's heading to the Maw right now. Yeah, and he's already got that teleport, so he's just going to go uh, take care of it now. And it looks like he's planning on humiliating the Maw using the Ice Orbs. The Ice Orb is really, really good against the Maw. Ice Orb is kind of an underrated orb. It's actually the developer's favorite orb. Well, I, it's it's a pretty orb, I'm not going to lie. I mean, it does it have the aesthetic, orb. Is it the aesthetics of it, but the range on it against so many things is just... Ugh. There's Gear 2, which... Came um, from Neric. Ooh, so TNT is also required. Deadpulse is looking for his chime right now, which is access to the sea sh or to the uh, Mirage Tower. Yeah, in the future on these broadcasts, it will be obvious to see how many shards each player is at. On short notice for this exhibition, we kind of didn't, uh, we weren't able to get the trackers set up the way we wanted to. Um, but uh, if anybody was, you know, keeping a track, anybody who's good at counting cards. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, even oh if we God. have the tracker up and running right now, the shard tracking is really difficult because a lot of the time it relies upon really quick eyes and having to watch when they menu. And Papa yeah. and Deadpools both generally menu at the speed of light. Yeah. Uh, we did just see a, a Waffle Soup hint for his uh, time spinner wheel. I think that's because he already knows where the gear one is. He just can't get it. Uh... No, no. He hasn't, I don't know if he's hinted to gear one. He but, has not uh, hinted for gear one yet. Uh, no, oh. because we know it, it's... I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have gotten it already if he had hinted, because he has access to it. Yeah, um, I think Saracen is going here hunting for the elevator key card. Hey, there's yeah, that absolutely. meatball. Um, he does have the B key card, so he can just go all the way um, to the boss of the lab, grab a teleporter, so when he is ready to go into the end game, he can just go ahead and uh, enter it as soon as he gets his final piece of the time spinner. So uh, this is a this is a pretty good play. Um, doing stuff that you know you have to do anyway is always a good idea. Uh, I, I love the going as right as you can as early as possible in both the past and the present is kind of how I approach things in terms of, uh, you know, you literally are required to do it and also check density. Yep, and it looks like... Uh... Looks like Waffle just found his hairpin as well, because he's, you know, last chance before them all, and sending out that Vorpal to Papa, which I did not see how it rolled. Ooh, and Papa Dukes has found a great grind tile for his party, if he can keep people yeah. alive. Well, you might need to, yeah, fade a little to get some armor up. Oh no, fade is, uh, fade is damage. Oh, fade is damage, what was I thinking? Fog. Uh, fog, yeah. Fog and Fog 2 is armor, uh, and uh, yeah, Fade and Harm is going to be what he's going to do here, and well, his White Mage is getting some levels. Yeah. I, I don't remember. Is XP split in Final Fantasy 1 Randomizer? Yes, it is. Uh, if you're dead, unless there's a flag set, you don't... Or if you're dead, you don't get XP. So would that mean that his White Mage just got a lot more XP because the other three were dead? Yep. All the XP oh, from those six And we have a hint for elevator key card from Saracen, so uh, yeah. there we go. That's all the information they need uh, for go mode. Waffle Soup will be making his way across the tower 
uh, to get his time spinner wheel. And since he is in the tower, he's going to go down to those sealed caves and he's going to get his gear one. So uh, we may see time spinner actually finish uh, before Final Fantasy one in one seed and then Final Fantasy one finish before time spinner in the other. So that'll be really interesting to see, you know, the leftover checks, what all is left, who sends more to whom. Yep. All right. So Deadpool's knows he has to go to ice. Uh, Ice Cave 16, that is one of the double chests behind the uh, vanilla Frost Dragon tile. Oh, and I and then you, you know, the longer this seed goes, um, the more that Teleria attachment shows off why it's so important to get. Yeah. Yeah. It's, mm, it's so much. Oh, it makes for happies. All right. And we see that Waffle is... Now hinting for his time spinner spindle or his time spinner gear one. Yep, and he is going to say, "Oh well, I'm right there." <laughs> yep. And we also found out that the lab today was being powered by a berry pick me up plus. That's, They're uh, very high calorie. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's got to be. <laughs> All right, and Deadpool's heading on his way, just stomping on through Ice Cave because it's Ice Cave. Yeah, I, by this point. Um, since enemies aren't like scaling or anything, it is uh, pretty easy to get through some of these early early areas. The expected levels of these areas is a lot, a lot lower. Ooh, and whereas Papa found those, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, those metal slimes, Ed Pulse has found an Agama tile. He's probably not going to spend a whole lot of time here because he's just ready to roll. But uh, it's good to know at least that it's there. All right, and Waffle Soup is now in go mode, uh, but he does still have to do... Yeah, there's the elevator key card for Saracen. He does still have to do the entire military hangar and lab, but uh, this is kind of what I was saying earlier, where you're in go mode, you just stop doing checks because you know you're going to be handing over all of your checks uh, to the other game as soon as you finish your goal. So that'll, that'll be uh, really interesting to see what this means from a timing perspective. All right, and we see Saracen going for the eye orb against the Blob Mom because Blob Mom is weak against slashing and fire. And uh, after he's face tanked a few hits, swapping over to the Shadow Seal because you know more damage, more. Yeah, what's interesting? It looks like he's trying to do orb swap strats, uh, but he doesn't have uh, the Shadow Seal on the loadout that he's swapping to. So it's actually making the eye orbs that he launches out. Uh, from that slot, not ha have the damage bonus from Shadow Seal. Mm. So that's something you kind of want to do uh, if you're trying to do orb swap strats in order to get more eye orbs onto the screen than you would normally otherwise be allowed to do. Uh, make sure you get all your damage bonuses um, across all of your loadouts. Get it lined up, yeah. And Waffle Soup just punching the generator and like, all right, going, bye. Well, Krimdahl actually pointed out that he got a max HP up. It was not... Oh no! <laughs> it was not orb swap. It was a max HP up that he got. Uh, where you know, oops, oops, you're healed. Oh man, oops, your shadow seal's not very good. All of a sudden, looks like Saracen's got a meatball charged up just to launch at something, because you know, meatball deserves it, or meatball wants to be launched. All right. Well, this is going to be really close <laughs> on the time spinner front. Yeah. And we're I have that. a feeling that once this time spinner seed is over, uh, we are going to see. Um, how, what do you have to do once you collect all of the shards? So with Final Fantasy, uh, once you get those thirty-two shards, you then have to go to the Temple of Fiends revisited, which is the Temple of Fiends. It's the first dungeon you ever go into. Break the orb, go on down, beat the four fiends in their refight mode, so the four tougher fiends and kill chaos. All right, so we'll see here. We have uh, pretty much lockstep with this boss, Volterillus, weak against that Empire Orb that we uh, said is the uh, most powerful in the game. We're not seeing very definite Shadow Seal strats from either of them, which I'm surprised from Waffle Soup. Uh, yeah, it looks like I he's rolling he with Shadow Seal. Kind of like face tank, although he is standing directly in front of Volterillus. I wonder if he's not feeling very confident in his uh, in his defense. Oh, see, there we go. That's what you want to see from uh, Shadow Seal strats. You see how quickly 
Uh, that damage piled up once he got below 100 health, doing over 100 damage himself to that uh, near final boss. Yeah, if I'm playing Time Spinner and I've got the Shadow Seal and I'm fighting Volterra List, you may or may not hear me going, Come on, hit me harder! Hit me harder! Yes, it's a... Uh... He does a lot of damage, so it's a really good way. Uh, and I will I will remark on the wa what Waffle Soup just tried to do there, uh, but it's a really good way to pile up Shadow Seal bonuses. Um, Waffle Soup just jumped when he hit that save point. What he was trying to do was toe tap. Uh, we call that toe tapping on a save point, where you want to get the save, but the healing is actually over time for as long as you are touching it, and it is very fast. So what you actually want to do is you want to barely graze the save point so you don't get a lot of healing, um, but you do still manage to get the save in case you manage to uh, uh, die to one of these really rude enemies. Yeah. Although with his HP at what it was, I'm not sure he was actually... Oh, wow, and there's <laughs> a swag for you right there. Yeah, going for Waffle it. Waffle Soup did not need to do that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I love doing Light Wall Skip. And Waffle light Soup... Light Wall Skip is great. Waffle Soup is in the most satisfying room in the game. Where you just get a jump over those four zeals. Don't have to deal with them. Just jump. Yeah, Waffle Soup has a rule that he always does light wall, light wall skip if he, if he can. Because he also speedruns this game. And um, you don't get Sash in the speedrun. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, light wall skip is a very important tool to have. Because if you miss it, you're doing a very long climb up. Yeah, and it looks like... Uh, well, because Saracen didn't go to pick up that... Uh, the new uh, clary attachment uh he yeah, is he's... actually taking the time to kill some of these things which yeah they're good xp but nah, it's it's time all right it doesn't look like waffle soup ever got Jin inferno so this fight's going to take a little bit longer uh than it will take saracen for sure yeah and waffle soup actually going for you know legit violent strats yeah, he's got uh, he's got his Empire Orbs out and Shadow Seal, and he's just going to chill at 65 health for a while. And chat pointing out, it looks like Dead Pulse needs to get a total of six shards more, which will be finding two shards and then killing Tiamat. Uh, if you kill any of the four elemental fiends in their first form, you can get some shards. Uh, Lich and Carry being the easier two, give you two shards each. Kraken and Tiamat being the harder to give four each. All right, and here we have a light wall siding as Waffle Soup is fighting against the final boss. Uh, he's going to chill on top of this light wall, which is itself doing damage. And um, yeah, he's going to be making mincemeat of this, uh, as we like to call it, since Nightmare, this boss, is based off of a horse skeleton. We like to call it beating a dead horse. Now, that was something I did not know. <laughs> so we had a panic heal there um yeah. but it looks like he's going to be finishing up and there it is if we could get exclamation points in chat uh for waffle soup's time spinner finish we're going to be getting that same thing for saracen very shortly yeah looks like saracen is going for the blood orb and the meatball strat yeah i mean what would suit him here is just saying blood orb whatever the meatball is kind of the way to go yeah and I'm not going to lie, uh, Saracen is probably going to advance beyond the exclamation mark because, well, he comes from the Final Fantasy Discord, or Final Fantasy <laughs> community mostly, and that's not something we were used to doing. We check our bonk chat, or our bonks. Hey, I'm into that. I coded that, so I'm into it. <laughs> I uh, Thank you for that, because, yeah, I, I personally like that. Like It I, was one of the easiest things to do, and it was very highly requested. So I was like, all right, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> Right. And here we have, it looks like uh, we're going to get uh, Economizer Ring Light Wall Strats, uh, which is good. Uh, we'll see if Saracen swaps uh, if Saracen swaps loadouts here. If you swap loadouts uh, with the Light Wall, you can actually get more than three on a screen. Otherwise, you're limited to three on a screen. It doesn't look like he is aware of that strat. Nope. Uh, uh, that's not something I was aware of either. I'm going to be in or taking that into account and... Uh probably be teaching that to the people of ffr as well <laughs> yeah it's really uh it's funny the story behind that strat is the developer of the game uh in the middle of our last tournament like two or three rounds into the last tournament decided you know technically i guess you could have more than three light walls 
on the screen at a time. <laughs> All right, and G and GG's for Sierra and exclamation, and, yeah, exclamation, exclamation marks and GG's out for both of them. And it looks like uh, Waffle Soup did progress forward and saw that he got eight bonks. Saracen got sixteen. Yes. Um, and it looks like there was at least one shard, maybe more, sent over to the Final Fantasy folks because Deadpool is on his way to Topher now. This will be an exciting finish. This is going to be great. Kind of just uh, comes down to the Final Fantasy routing, uh, really, in the end here. We had pretty close finishes between Wop Soup and Saracen, and then the uh, the uh, shard distribution after finishing. Um, I mean, it looks like uh, a lot of the shards that uh, were necessary were in uh, the Final Fantasy randomizer world. Let's see. I'm seeing from, uh, from Waffle Soup, I'm just scrolling through things right now. I've seen four shards. Yeah, four shards total that were sent over to Papa. And yeah, the uh, official times, official race times at GG times of Waffle Soup was 53.29 and Saracen at 55.01. So it is real stonking close. Also, because I just kind of like saying that sometimes because I'm weird. <laughs> real stonking close. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I blinked for a moment and I see that uh, Deadpool is already fighting Kraken too. And Deadpool's tossed a soft on his fighter to bring it back up and act as an ablative meat shield for Kraken 2, because Kraken 2 does Kraken 2 things like obliterating mages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, mages don't like big physical damage. No, no. Well, and I am honestly surprised that that white mage is still standing. Kraken 2 was not doing Kraken 2 things today. And there's Tiamat. Yeah, let's see how Tia2 does. All right, we've got Fast coming out, going on to that ninja. Got a swing from the fighter, doing some niggling damage. And six hits, 938 from that ninja already. Harm four going out, 88 damage. And we've got more nukes. We've got harm fours. We've got swing coming out. Seven hits, 184. Ooh. All right, cure four on that ninja. Get it nice and healthy. Keep it nice and healthy. That's your damage. All right, you got wait, fight, harm, four, nuke. Punch. A blade of Meat Shield has done its job. Four hits, 386 on the Tia 2, and Tia 2 is toast. Yeah, it's uh, important to note the damage distribution, or the attack distribution from um, from enemies in Final Fantasy 1 is uh, based off of the order of the party, correct? Uh, it's supposed to be, ostensibly. Uh, it's supposed to be a 50, 25... Uh, actually, I think it's a... I don't remember the exact numbers, but I know that it's more than 50% is supposed to hit slot one. Um, gotcha. All right, so we've got Invis 2 strats coming out, trying to get some stuff. Got weight coming out. We've got fast. We've got, looks like more nukes. Nine hits, 817 out of that chaos. This chaos rolled light. Harm 4 going out. I didn't see how much damage. Lit 2 coming out from chaos, doing tickle damage. Nuke coming out from that black mage. 178 in middling roll. All right, we got fight, wait, fight. Or fight weight, nuke. 10 hits, 514. Chaos swings, drops that fighter. Fighter did what he was supposed to do, take the punch. Fight weight, nuke. Nuke landing, doing 188. Ninja swing, 7 hits, 205. Ice 2 coming out, eh, not a whole lot of damage. We see the power of those ribbons sitting on those guys. Nuke coming out, doing 364. Nice high roll. Cure 4 coming out to top off that ninja. Quad X coming out, doing nothing. 9 hit, 728. Get your GGs out in chat for Deadpools. Finishing up yes. with an official race time .gg time of 59.01. Uh, and Karant, thank you for the stats. It's 50, 25, 12.5, 12.5. So at this rate, uh, Papa Dukes will have to finish within the next minute and a half, which uh, does not look like it's going to happen. Um, but because it is cumulative... Uh, the added times between the two official race time GGs will uh, be what is the actual full time for the team. Um, so yeah, it looks like Papa Duke's still uh, working his way towards the end game here. Yeah, he's heading towards ordeals. I'm not sure how many uh, shards he needs. I have to try and keep a quick eye out when he uh, goes to the menu next running into some catmen who are doing horrible things like, you know, getting in the way. Uh, and Jap pointing out in chat that he needs four shards total. Yeah, the chime in ordeals is uh, something that Deadpool Scott 
a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And the good thing about uh, being able to access Sky and Mirage is, well, I mean, you can go in and punch Tia for the four, or you can check any of the 52 chests that are in the combination of Sky and Ordeals. 52? Yep. Is quite a bit for a multi-world. Yeah, and 52 chests is quite a bit for Final Fantasy, period, given that there are a total of 241 chests spread about the entire game. Wow. That's, yeah. Uh, that's a good percentage. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason that a lot of the uh, community, uh, the Final Fantasy community, is they're a big fan of saying, you know, Sky provides. It's like the opposite of Moon is Haunted. Yeah, pretty much. Power Staff, that's nothing good to see. Interesting uh, kind of note about the Power Staff. The only notable thing about it in the vanilla game is that its price is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's it. There's nothing else notable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, was, I, don't, I don't know. I was waiting for the kicker and it never happened. <laughs> When I say only, that is quite literally the only thing. All right. All right. Papa has got his chime, walking his way on over to... Ooh, uh, back to his airship and running across some Sorias, which are... Eh, they're a tasty little encounter. I don't turn them down when I find them, unless I'm in a hurry. Staken Wings, which, once again, he's, yeah, Papa is just an, I'm not going to bother with anything, I'm just going. Yeah. Yeah, he's not hitting any of the chests, he's probably just going to stomp his way on up to Tia, punch that dragon in the necks, and uh, yep. then head on over to Topher. Um, so we are joined here in the broadcast booth by Ted Bol Dead Pulse and Saracen. Oh yes, GG guys! I forgot to forgot to let them know to jump on in there. I'm uh, a little oh, bit hey. distracted by things right now. So hello, What's Dead Pulse. Happening. So yeah, at, at this rate, it's um, I believe the time has passed to say that your combined time will be faster than the combined time for Papa Duke's and Waffle Soup. So congratulations on the win in this exhibition. Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. I had a really good partner. I also had a very good partner. We're not actually teamed up for the uh, the tournament, though. Oh, you're not? <laughs> nope. Sarah no, actually. Saracen I is... Was, uh, I was going to say this well, but I, I don't know. Maybe not anymore. Yeah, no, Saracen is actually uh, my partner, but... Uh, well, because it's still early in the signups, we don't have a whole lot of teams signed up yet, and uh, Deadpool's being one of the other tournament organizers, jumped in, and uh, I had to... Uh, I convinced Saracen to jump in with him. Just because we wanted to be able to show this thing off. Yeah, I think yeah. Um, I think it was a really awesome exhibition. We did get to see a lot of routing divergence. Um, we got to see a, a big reason why, especially in a multi-world where routing divergence can uh, mean a lot. Uh, there was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there was the Chime uh, Dead Pulse that you acquired pretty early in the seed. Um, and Papa Dukes actually just got it. Oh my. Yeah. Yes. Sky has a lot of chests, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, I learned that today. <laughs> <laughs> but hilariously enough, I only found one shard in Sky. My goodness. Um, I was I was digging through Sky 3 and uh, nothing, and then I, I finally gave up uh, trying to find that extra shard because I was at 5 uh, after checking out uh, the first floor of Mirage. And Saracen's like, oh, I'm on Nightmare. It'll be fine. And just before Tiamat, I looked, oh, he gave me, you know, somewhere between five and 50 shards. <laughs> he gave yeah, you uh, enough shards. Out on me, Saracen. I was. We, <laughs> we were, we were um, keeping an eye on that because um, not only was it the, uh, the shards that you picked up, the, well, the one shard you picked up in the sky, uh, Saracen, you ended up with Gin Inferno, which uh, Waffle Soup never, uh, never acquired. Um, and there were a couple of other items that you had, um, you had earlier 
uh, than waffle soup. I think you had uh, you had twin pyramid keys for sure earlier. Um, it was just like a lot of the routing maybe didn't pay off so much for you, Dead Pulse. But in Saracen's world, um, it made his life a whole lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of clown routed a lot of that. So um, thanks, Dead Pulse, for carrying my weight. <laughs> Like, oh, I think I would, uh, I was talking to myself. I'm like, Sarah, so what do you think I should do? I think I should do this. Not letting it yeah, go um, get bored and edgewise. <laughs> I would say the main difference uh, between you and Waffle Soup Saracen is uh, Waffle Soup did not visit the caves at all until he had, uh, he had the water mask. And mm -hmm. as such, he got the A key card very, very early. Um, <laughs> and and oh. then he hinted, he hinted for Teleria attachment which was in the Zarian caves. Yeah. Yep, I, I saw that in the, the forfeit. Yeah, and, and... Uh, nothing nothing else was in the Zarian caves. <laughs> yeah, lower sealed <laughs> caves proved to be a bust. Uh, so I, um, I, I'm sure you saw the, the moment of frustration when I went to go get the, uh, whatever was down in sealed water hook. Yeah, gear I know one. it was go mode. Yeah, gear one. And I, I like hit the elevator door and I'm like, Oh no. Oh no, I need the elevator key. <laughs> yep. I, I try to hint for it. You have one point and you need twenty-four to hint. Oh boy. <laughs> so that's why I like did the whole sweep over through the starter chests, and then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna go do moth, then I'm gonna go do lab, then I'm gonna, you know, hint this thing. Dead pulse, go to ice! <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh I mean I was uh, saying on the on the commentary, uh my general routing decisions all other things equal is uh, in both past and present, go as far right as you can, as early as you can. Um, mm. Most of the time, because you have to anyway. And then on top of that, the check density is really high. So having access to all of those chests and being able to send them even for hint equity is a big deal. Good point. And, and like, I know that, like, you know, it, it's like the rule from Link to the Past randomizer, ABCD, always be... Or, always be completing dungeons right um that it's the same general idea in time spinner yeah head right because that's where the dungeons are that's where the bosses are and uh yeah i like i said my clown route it was uh it was a thing hey it worked that was you yeah, know that's the important part for it yeah it probably resulted in you just not even entering sealed cave when you otherwise may have so <laughs> it may have worked out so in the end so I don't know if you caught this, but I did check the chest that had the A card in it, but I warp sharded before the item hit the server. So I never actually picked up the A card from that chest. Oh, well, that would have oh. been devastating. Yeah, that, that would have sucked. All right, but we have Papa pulling up to Chaos. We got the fast going out. We got a harm four going out. We got a swing. First swing, eight hits, 301 damage after the fast actually landed. Chaos smacking the Black Mage for 222 points of damage. But, you know, Black Mage is cast fast. He's done with his job. At this point, it's just, you know, try and buff if you can. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of take over when chaos fights come up. Sorry about that. <laughs> I want to see two chaos fights at the same time, and I want to hear you call it. It's real chaotic, I am not going to lie. <laughs> you need to get Fizzle for something like that. That's the ultimate experience. Fizzle is a great one for that. I uh, I can't quite hold a candle to Fizzle when he's calling chaos fights. It's too nerve wracking to watch a dual chaos fight. It really is. Yeah, there's a lot of RNG in play in terms of the damage being dealt. So uh, yeah, it's it's real interesting. Ooh, low roll on that hit. Six hits for 89. This is not looking so great on the damage going out, but yeah, he's got all the invis twos going out. He's gonna be pretty safe. We didn't see anything really rude come from this chaos. Yeah, someone remarked that um, because of the general low HP of the party, if Chaos had had Nuke, it would make things very interesting. Yeah, I apparently rolled a bit of a kind seed this time. Yeah, we I were saying we kind of wanted it to be difficult. <laughs> oh my. Don't worry, you got yeah. my heart going pretty good for the last, like, five to ten minutes of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was... 
most of the way to Sandman, and then I saw Waffle Soup finish, and I was like, oh no, oh no. Yeah, Papa Dude yeah, it was, you were, behind. yeah, <laughs> you actually hit Volterillus about, I want to say like 10 to 11 seconds before he did. Yeah, he was going for but the... But he had the uh, Teleria, and so he got through faster, okay. Yeah, he yeah. had the Teleria, and he went for the uh, Shadow Seal strats, so he just bodied Volterilus. Yeah, he actually finished did... Volterilus before you did. All right. I tried to do Shadow Seal strats, and then I got did. max HP from uh, from Dead Pulse. <laughs> yes, you did that, I believe, twice, because you tried to do it against Genza, and then it happened again against Sandman. All right, so, so get your GGs out in chat for Papa Dukes finishing up with an official official race time dot GG time of one hour, ten minutes, and ten seconds. So GGs, and they are sitting in the waiting room. So I'm gonna pull them both in. Yeah. Um, one thing that I can say is that. This is just, it is wild. This is my first multi-world that I've actually done commentary for. And it's it, it was crazy. It was just being able to watch the items as they come in and saying, oh, wow, that was, and, and I want to thank, I want to thank you, Hate, a lot for being that insight on FF1 as I'm trying to kind of learn this randomizer. Um, just being the, being able to call like, oh man, well, this, this dungeon had this, and that was a, that was a crazy gamble or, or anything like that. So I really appreciate that. And that having been said, this was incredibly entertaining to do commentary on. Uh, the time spinner was was real close the whole time. And then the routing divergence from FF1 was kind of the big difference in the accumulative time across the two. Yeah. But welcome, uh, Waffle Soup and Papa Dukes. Uh, man, how are you feeling about this seed? Uh, I'm feeling good. That was fun. I... I'm happy with the time spinner seat at least. I had a great time. I'm I'm a little disappointed that I didn't roll a dumpster fire tonight, honestly. Yeah, the dumpster was quite um doused. Yeah. But yeah, Papa, how did uh how did you feel at that start there? I saw you reset out and rebuild your party with a white mage this time, or the second time. Don't know if you're having audio issues. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, we'll just keep this rolling. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, Waffle Soup, your hint for Teleria attachment. Um, that how much did like I, I saw you kind of think? Well, maybe I should go get it, and then you saw the military hangar warp, and you're like, well, I can't get it. Mm -hmm. How much did you kind of rush there as soon as you could? Because that is a a big item to get yeah like that was the first thing i hinted for i realized i couldn't get it um and i was just like thinking the whole time when can i get that item that's gonna really turn things around so yeah it was um we were talking with saracen um you had the a key card before he did because you waited till you had water mask in order to do the to do the caves um, he went through the caves and then backtracked once he had the water mask and he had beaten the maw, just went up the elevator and to get the water checks. He had actually warp sharded out before the server picked up that he had picked up the A key card. Oh, I hate when that happens. It was hilarious, dude. <laughs> I felt like I dodged a bullet when I got to the end and saw the forfeit. Mm. Yeah, you know, I mean, really. The Teleria was locked there. I mean, the, the time spent in sealed caves might have, uh, it, it would have at least made this a little bit tighter in terms of the cumulative time. Um, but then again, the the, uh, the Teleri attachment is, is very fast, especially when you're in go mode and de-boosting through all that stuff uh, yeah. on your way to the lab and then on your way to Sandman. All right, and we got mm -hmm. Papa back in the booth. Let's see if his audio issues are resolved, so. What's going on? Hey, there we go. Now we got you coming through, so GG's on that one. Nah. So I saw you reset out and uh, rebuild your party at the beginning there. Was it? I'm assuming it was because you saw that harm four at level one. So when I switched over to uh, Bizhawk to six point or two point six one, it still has the old uh, hotkeys on there. So I had my party made and I was setting up for the race, and it reset out of that, and I didn't realize it until right before the race started. Oh no. I didn't even have a chance to look at blursings or anything. I just went with <laughs> quickest thing I could do. Man. Yeah, it was a really it was a really tight race. Um, it came down to just like 
a couple of minor uh, routing divergences. We'd, we'd already gone through uh, the routing divergence of Waffle Soup doing a mostly unnecessary uh, sealed caves, and um, Dead Pulse had acquired that chime from Ordeals very, very early in the seed. As um, soon as I saw that's where it was, I knew he had it because he loves the early Ordeals. <laughs> <laughs> I just started uh, cackling maniacally. <laughs> let me let me ask y'all something. How did you like the double toxic three ribbons? Oh, we loved it. When I when I saw I saw the well, uh, I believe Hate saw the first one go through, and I think I saw the third one go through. And he was like, "Yeah, no, I think they sent another one earlier." So, <laughs> yep. yeah, I uh, I had after that fight, I had to go back into my inventory and make sure I had them equipped. Oh man, yeah, actually, I didn't see the uh, the toxic land through the ribbons. I just saw the ribbons land in your inventories. Oh no, there was double oh. two toxic, same same cast through oh. the ribbon. Oh man, on two or three of my party members, right oh. at the very end of oh. volcano. Oh so man, so I never I never got those shards, and that slowed me down a lot. Oh, oh I didn't even realize that that would explain a bit of it then. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, beasties. Yeah, it was. Uh... I I didn't see that. I just took on carry at you know level twelve and <laughs> somehow did it. Yeah, I was I was I was around there. Maybe maybe a little higher. Maybe fifteen or so. But yeah, all three all three party members had ribbons and took out two out of three of them in one toxic cast. Jeez, beasties. Yeah. That's just I mean, brutal. Something that I have to remark: being pretty new, and by pretty new, I mean I joined the Discord today to Final Fantasy One randomizer. Um, the menuing is out of this world from, from both of you, just crazy, like lightning speed. I don't even know what's happening whenever I see you, you, whenever I saw either of you in a menu. So that's just astonishing to me. Well, let me tell you, Papa Ducks is a uh, former duckling Supreme. And, uh, whenever I get to race someone of his caliber, my, uh, I don't know, my heart rate goes up and I, uh, I try my hardest to just hit the reset buttons at the correct times, get the flow down. Uh, and I even remarked this to Sarah's and I'm like, uh, my button pressing was pretty on point tonight. Yeah. My menuing is actually one of the weaker points of my game. Um, it's taken me a long time to get to the point I'm at now. Uh, i still make a lot of menuing errors and I mean, it cost me seconds, you know, 30, 40 seconds per run, probably. Uh, it's something I'm still working on all the time. It's a lot of it's a lot of work just memorizing where everything is. And yeah, and, and the menuings in Final Fantasy one, as opposed to other Final Fantasies, the menus are not I mean, they're not very mashable. You know, there's a lot of selecting like trade and selecting equip. And having to, you know, be a little precise. You can't just say, "Oh, I'm going to sort my inventory, and then I'm just going to equip it." What's the top? What's at the top of it? You actually have to have that menuing down, which is real, real admirable. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss those. But no, this, uh, this, oh, this was fun. Uh, thank you for uh, for partnering up with me, Saracen, and for hate for lending him to me. Yeah. Uh, I had a uh, I had a blast. I love uh, AP and uh, Time Spinner and Final Fantasy Randomizer go together very well, just in the flow. Like if you were watching um, specifically like mine and Saracen's, you could see that we were both converging on go mode at about the same time. And more often than not, that's what I've been seeing when I've been doing these. That should make for a really, really interesting tournament. I mean, I was I was thinking going into this, like, what are the odds that we actually see BK mode at some point during this tournament? During the tournament, I'm hoping we'll see it, but uh... <laughs> I mean, if tonight's any indication, I'm not sure we're going to. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that went on there, and at no point were either of them looking like they were stuck on what to do next. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was I was just gonna say BK mode is my sole reason for bringing a dead black belt along. Gives me <laughs> something uh, product productive to do if I'm blocked in progression to grind him up a little bit. But yeah, um, I just want to say thank you all for uh, jumping in on this. Uh, it was kind of put together at the last minute, as evidenced by the um, lack of you know decency in the overlay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, thanks for jumping in and volunteering for this. I do truly appreciate it. And thanks for putting on a really good show for us. I'm looking forward to watching the run back on this. Yeah, me too. Oh, same. And thank you guys for putting this on at such short notice. 
Yeah, thank you, RPG Limit Break, uh, for being our host. And hate, thank you for being uh, the uh, lead on the broadcasting booth. This was a this was a real pleasure. Like I said, this was my first multi world that I'd uh, that I had ever commentated on. I've I've done a lot of randomizer commentary, but this was the first multi world, and it was eye opening. It's very exciting to do. Um, I'm going to be in the tournament, so I don't know what uh, restreams are going to look like. Hopefully, I get to do another one of these in the future. I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, well, thank you for, you know, jumping in on this one. Uh, you know, when when I realized, yeah, I need somebody who's, you know, more native to the uh, FF or to the uh, Time Spinner randomizer community cuz I there's stuff that I don't know obviously. I was like, you know what? I think Wef Jepster probably be a good one. Yeah, I love doing commentary. So anytime, really. Um, but yeah, no, thanks to the runners for making this very exciting to commentate. This was this was a blast. So yeah, with that, uh, go around and get some final thoughts. Uh, let's start with you, Waffle, since you, know, you were the first one to, stream, to finish on stream. Um, I thought dipping for Talaria would be a good play, and maybe it wasn't. Now I'm questioning my strategy there, but this was still a lot of fun. All right, and Saracen, second to finish on stream. Uh, well, Waffle, it was uh, it was great being able to go up against you here, you know, in the pseudo one-to-one, -one, uh, I, I think I did okay. Uh, there was definitely a lot that I could improve on that I recognize about 30 seconds too late at every opportunity. Um, but I look forward to uh, meeting up with you again in the tournament with my actual partner, Hate. And uh, yeah, we'll see how things go then. All right, and Deadpool's not just a rental partner. This is a blast. I love AP. I love uh, Time Spinner. Uh, and obviously, I love Final Fantasy Randomizer. Uh, so this tournament, uh, you can still sign up for it. I believe we have five more days for signups. Uh, all you need is one Final Fantasy Randomizer player, one Time Spinner player. Uh, and if you don't have a partner, uh, you can sign up. Uh, for looking for partner, I bet you that you'll find one. But uh, you know, thanks everyone for uh, for commentating, putting this on. Hopefully, during the tournament, we can get more of these in and uh, uh, take up some more of RPG Limit Break space and have a good time. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna just echo that. If you're still hanging out in chat, we do have a bunch of links, courtesy of uh, Danny three eight eight three. It's the Archipelago Discord, uh, and also uh, the discord that is separate from the archipelago archipelago discord for the tournament so um make sure if you're interested to check those out but i think we still have papa dukes what are your final thoughts here i had a great time uh thanks to waffle soup for partnering up with me uh it's gonna get better trust me <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys for uh doing the comms and tracking everything and uh restreaming this thanks to RB RG rpg limit break for their time uh anybody that's on the fence about this jump in uh i didn't have a partner when i jumped in when or when i first w showed my interest and got paired up with waffle and it's going to be great it's going to be a fun tournament it really is yeah it looks like we're going to have some really strong teams in the tournament i'm I'm very excited um to to just see how some of this plays out yeah i am quite looking forward to when the tournament actually starts up and we get to see what kind of madness shakes out there so uh, with that, um, why don't you go ahead and just take us on home? Sure thing. Uh, yeah, like I said in chat, uh, there is a whole host of links. If you're interested in Archipelago, you can go to archipelago.gg to check out everything that's involved in the project. It's not just Final Fantasy 1 and Time Spinner. There's tons, tons of games that you can uh, link up with other people who are playing different games. It's a, an amazing experience. There's lots of really easy to follow beginner's guides if you want to get something set up. Join the Discord. You can join uh, Asyncs, which are, you know, you can stop playing and just wait for items to come in uh, and then uh, pick the game up again at your leisure, as well as uh, live real-time uh, games that are being scheduled all of the time on the Archipelago Discord. Uh, and also you can join to get the latest information on the randomizers of uh, every game that is in the Archipelago project. Uh, and also in chat, we have the Discord for the Final Fantasy Randomizer and the Time Spinner Discord, which includes a setting, uh, a section for 
uh, the randomizer. And uh, both of these communities have been really great. Um, we had mentioned on stream, or Hate did specifically, that the crossover of Final Fantasy 1 and Time Spinner, like this is this specific exhibition in this tournament has kind of been a couple months in the making once um, the kind of crossover between our communities really began. Uh, I'm trying to get uh, some people from Time Spinner to play some Final Fantasy 1 randomizers so we can repay the favor, but uh, both communities have been really, really cool, and I'm very appreciative of how welcoming and, and awesome FF1R has been uh, when they kind of flooded the Time Spinner Discord. I didn't know what to think, but they have, they've all been really, really awesome. Yeah, sorry, we kind of descended upon you like a swarm of locusts. No, and, and it was appreciated. Yeah, uh, we we love uh, people playing the game. It's kind of like uh, it was a kickstarted indie game. It's not as big of a name as a Final Fantasy. So the more people we can get playing this game and this randomizer, especially myself as a dev of the randomizer, it's just it's very appreciated. I mean, if you haven't heard us say it before, there's a degree to which the FFR Discord has become an AP time spinner Discord. So, you know, hang out in both places. We're both cool communities. Yeah, I mean, I, I joined the uh, FF Randomizer Discord today after, I guess, putting it off a couple of days. I want to learn more about this randomizer. I've I've heard from people that have played it that aren't even, uh, quote unquote, in the community that they, they did it and it was a blast. So I uh, I look forward to uh, coming up with, uh, you know, a, a good a good know how of Final Fantasy one randomizer so I can kind of bring that into my repertoire of randomizers. I can't can't wait for that to be the case because it it seems like it's going to be a real blast. Um, but I do want to make sure uh, we we I want to make sure that we uh, shout out our runners, uh, Papa Duck six seven zero nine, Waffle Soup, Saris and GG, and Dead Pulse Sigma. All of uh, those links are in chat. Uh, go ahead and follow those channels uh, for uh, Time Spinner, Final Fantasy One randomizer, other randomizers, perhaps some speed running. Uh, also, our restreamer. Uh, was hate as well as my co-commentator and our tracker uh was jat 2980 so thanks for that i know he's he's already gone he had to go but that's greatly appreciated um so make sure you follow those three and i've been wef jebster you can find me at twitch.tv slash wef jebster uh just go ahead and show support to everybody involved in this and once again thank you Thank you so much, RPG Limit Break, for offering up a little bit of your space for this exhibition. Can't wait to bring more of this in the tournament itself. And with that, I bid you a good evening and adieu.